Come join us at DNR Outdoors, where fishing with friends is exciting and always an adventure on the ice and open water as we go out and catch the biggest and nicest fish in and around Osseus and in the South Okanagan. With your host Daniel Holdebein and co-host Ryan Richter, this is DNR Outdoors. And welcome back to our fishing show. I'm your host Daniel Holderbein and you're watching DNR Outdoors. Today we have hit the waters again. It's been about uh, three weeks I'd say and uh, we were back by the apple shed kind of along the uh, um, reflection point there. Ryan got, Ryan got a bite but um, other than that we saw a whole bunch of fish so we're thinking that it might be bass. So Maybe next week we'll uh, come out and do some early bass fishing. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how we do it here. And uh, hopefully the wind stays like this. Co host, how are we doing? Hello. Doing good, as Daniel talked about. Caught a, caught a bite or two right at the, the packing house. It's about what, 10, 15 feet close to shore. So we say it might be bass because of a lot of structures. I've got my copper with black fly on, and if that doesn't work, I might change it up to uh, maybe a leech or maybe a muddler. So we'll see how this does for the time being. The water is 51, so we saw, Ryan saw a couple bass boats on the south side. We saw, we're seeing a boat up here in the bay to our right, and we saw one boat boats back there so it might be the time to uh, get the bass gear out so maybe next week we'll see we have kind of uh, not completed but reached our goal we're at 63 subscribers so that's awesome and uh, I talked to a guy yesterday and uh, asked me where the best places are for sure so I uh, gave him the info and hopefully you do good so if you don't have a boat you're kind of limited but that's okay um, there's a good few spots around here without a boat we're at the north end I'm gonna try along the sandbar and see who's home go along the uh, edge of the sandbar there catch a couple of trout today. With all this rain, hopefully it, uh, it's brought down bugs and whatnot from the river. All right, be back shortly. Sun's out, finally. The rain diverted us right over there and over there. And we uh, change our flies. I got the green dock sprouty on, and you have the red one. The red one. We're gonna red green this thing, no matter what. Yep. Case the H versus John Deere. That's <laughs> good thing I looked because Ryan's uh, hook was on my uh, transponder, so that would have been not cool for him. Ever since I got that hit, I really want to catch some. Yeah, I'm hoping we. Uh, get one at least so if we go out next week and try some early uh, spring bass hopefully Daniel can catch more this year I think we'll probably go what do you say the packing house and Salona Bay yeah maybe the bridge on the way by 
Because you know Salona Bay is usually like 10 degrees warmer than the lake. Because it's more shallower. Uh huh. And let's see if we can catch a bass in uh, April. I don't think we've done that, have we? I don't think so. Usually we wait till the end of May, June. We usually start bass fishing in the middle of, of uh, May. So since the water is the right temperature for around 50, so we're gonna try it next week now. Folks, this is life like. You cannot do better than this! <laughs> oh dear. Come on, man. I bet you if you were out by yourself, you would caught one by now. Yeah, maybe. Because usually when you were out last year by yourself, you caught something in this. As soon as I came along, nothing happened. <laughs> Majority of the time. What do you got for tackle here? Uh, what, flies? Well, whatever. Oh dear. I got a whole bunch of stuff. It smells great too. Got from work. Try that for trolling. Maybe. Oh. oh, let's see. Five inch worms. Yeah, five, six inch. If we go out bass fishing, both of my bass rods are already set up, ready to go. One head. Last year I caught nine bass on this scrub right here. That's what I have on. And let's see, on the other one, I've never used these before, I've had these for years, but I have that one on another one. Oh, let's see what we got here. What are my new ones that I bought myself? Man, I bought these. Might have to change that because I've been on this that hook for so long. These smell like coffee. This is coffee flavored, scented. We're gonna try that. And one of my favorites I think I'm gonna like is, uh, whoops. Now watch we get a bite right now as so we're not paying attention. <coughs> is uh, this one, it's double tailed. Cool. They say it was a, it's a four inch, but it's actually, I call it a two inch grub with two inches of tail. So those are gonna be my go to this year I think along with all the other grubs that I have and stuff in here since I've been using this one so much I just stuck to it since it's so good I gotta get me maybe some of these in the future uh huh now the idea for opening my taco box is actually putting my fly stuff away but Daniel's like nope, nope, nope not happening right now. So, yeah I would, uh, um, what do I have? I have same old stuff, nothing new. You didn't do any pr improvements, oh man. That means you're only gonna stop with one this year. <laughs> oh, am I gonna have to lend you some gear to use this summer so you can catch more than one? What do I got in this bag of wonders? Red blood worm, right there. Black four inch, um, dark green. We got blue and black assortment in here. Might be a watermelonish color. I don't know. I doubt it. No. I got these guys. Haven't really tried them a lot. Uh, these guys haven't tried these guys really. Um, I should. Crawdad tubes. I really, I don't really use tubes much, that much. I think you should try one of those. In the middle there. Those are good for bass. Tubes. Yeah. Yeah. Put a weighted hook on there. Um, I might do that. And then just my random whatever I bought over the years. Swivels, wait, jig heads, weights. These guys slayed the bass, perch, and trout. Um, jig heads, more jig heads, bass stuff here. And I said, 
And then I have had someone ask me about these. I haven't had any luck on these. Um, I might try those. I think there's a way to do it the right way, but um, I don't usually use them because they're triple hooked and it's kind of a pain to retrieve both hooks. So, so I just use single hooks and um, yeah, that's about it. Got this guy last year. Haven't really tried him out lately. This is for coke, kokanee. Um, for trolling probably. For bass, I usually use, I use these guys either red or blue, but the blue ones I like because they're more curved and they got the loop on there. These ones have a curve and they don't really sit properly I guess on the hook with the uh, four inch worm. So the blue ones I like better, more pre pre preference, but um, size, probably size size two anyway that's my collection if you if we do go out next week I cannot wait catch the hope they catch some bass and Daniel you're good. don't hook so many dogs this time I'll try not to he was a famous dog catcher last last year too many. And you know when when you actually hit the dock, it actually scares the bass. It's bass in here. Yeah. That's why I didn't catch any. Open uh, across just down from Bible Camp. I, there's supposedly uh, some weed beds, so we might try to find that next week too, and get them located. And I got a bike. Yes, you did. You should hear the one against the bites. We should try the downrigger. Put on our those and then like put beads behind in the in the squid. And go like maybe in front of the packing house and go down like I don't know 50 feet. Play with her depths and see what happens. Well, I did catch a trout salmon fishing. So you never know. Hopefully we'll see you in a little while. We might stick you underwater to look at the rock structures that we might be going to later. We'll see about that. Adios. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Holderbein, host of DNR Outdoors. Hope you enjoyed that first portion of our show. Now we're going to get into the second portion. We're doing this episode a little different. We usually don't do two days, two different days of footage, but um, April 22nd, last Friday, Ryan and I went out to the north end to troll for some trout and we started at Reflection Point, which is just before the packing house and the packing house is like right there and um, we were trolling in about I'd say I think 30 to 40 feet of water Ryan got a hit on his fly rod I believe he had on the woolly bugger at the time and um, there was a lot of fish on the screen then we then we really realized hmm the water is 50 degrees that's uh bass bass spawning temperatures so uh we uh headed to the north end to try for some trout uh nothing really happened that day as you saw so um we ended the video there and then today went out and kicked off our second portion of the show and continued on with it bass fishing I won't say how it goes, I'll we'll have to find out and see how we do, but um, we were both excited to get out there and um, we have some new places we want to try, some new docks, so we are super excited 
to uh, get out there again maybe next week um, see how the week goes for Daniel Holderbein host of DNR Outdoors we will see you on the water again catching fish having fun and remember safety first wear a life jacket that is most important because if you don't have one on and you hit your head or something goes um, it's not going to be a good day for you so it's going to end up pretty bad so remember safety first and uh, have fun and we will see you next time welcome folks my first bass of 2022 Slaughter Bay oh dear I'm using the uh, green tube with the wade hook oh dear Ooh, that looks good. Ooh. Yeah. Look at that. Up to a better start than them four. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. The jig. Say nice. pound and a half two pounds maybe. Awesome. Right in the beak. What do you say? How long? Uh, I'm gonna say 17. 15. I'm gonna get that first pick. <laughs> April 29th, Friday. First time catching a bass in April. All right, we'll be back soon. Got a bite hat on. I tried to turn the camera on and uh, came off, and then my line went all weird. If it keeps going like this today, we'll probably we'll switch rods so we don't we'll catch a couple each. Ryan uh, just hit the dock there. <clears throat> We're in uh, Slaughter Bay at the... My, uh, my casting is not going very well today. No. I haven't I've, gotten stuck yet though. I haven't done too bad. But uh, we're in uh, where those complexes are in here. We think Ryan got a hit over there, but we're not sure. He might have gotten stuck on uh, something on the bottom. But uh, it's... Uh, Still, yeah, 10 it, points for a dock. And about 100 points for your line twister. Yeah, we've had a, quite a few uh, mishaps with my line today, folks. It's uh, not getting, f it's uh, not fun anymore. We did a switcheroo. I have Ryan's rod. He's got a, uh, what do you got here? Canadian edition. Cardinal. Cardinal. Kind of like a fiber? What is this? Fiberglass? I do believe so. Fiberglass, cardinal, and uh, oh, yeah, that. six foot medium lure, one eighth, three quarter ounce, for a 12 pound line. And his reel is slick as a, slick as snot on a doorknob. Doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> We're, uh, I'm getting turned around here. And I've got a... What do I have? A Hamonic. Hamonic? Harmonic. Harmonic? I am six. What do we got here? Six foot six. So, same length. On rods. Fish on, folks. Little bass. On Ryan's rod. Smaller guy. Quite, quite. Oh, where'd he go? Yeah, that's a lighter color. 
he'd get red eyes. All right, look at that. You caught more than last year already, Daniel. Two. <laughs> yeah, that one has red eyes on it. Good grief. I read about something about that, but I can't remember what it, what it was. What? Nice. Uh, I'm gonna say, not quite a pound. Second bass. Alrighty, two bass in Solana Bay in April. April. We usually go out what? Middle of May. So, we're right. head start early. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, we didn't know it at the time, but there was actually a, a bass fishing tournament last weekend. <laughs> okay, don't move. Don't move. <laughs> Oh, that could have been bad. That could have been bad. That could have been really bad. Well, we just had a very interesting experience. I have no idea what happened to your jig. But here, I caught a bass. You're a bit sandy. And it looks like a, it's a little sandy, but yeah, hang on. Oh, yeah, dear. it's a largemouth. Hey, you're not bad. <laughs> interesting. Cool. Three bass, two for you and one for me. Goodbye. Well, we're heading forward to the tree. I, I was almost eating those branches. And uh, Daniel's line got tangled. And we're pulling out and he's like, I got a fish at the other end of this. Now he tells me. And I just stole the rod while he backed the boat up. <laughs> Yeah, right in there. Oh dear. Well, there's three fish. Two on that bait and one on this one. Three bass. So yeah, Solona, Solona Bay is cooking. And we're just gonna work this shoreline here one more time and then uh, probably head in well, I know one thing, I had a blast. I'm stoked for next time. <laughs> I think we should just uh, call it call it a year. Daniel caught two more, caught one more bass than he did all year. He's caught two this year. He caught more in one day than he did all year last year, man. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for coming along with us for our first open water bass fishing of 2022. I had a blast, caught my first 15 inch bass, smallmouth, and uh, caught a footer, probably about, not quite a pound, I don't know, but um, awesome to kick off the year, and uh, looking forward to next time. Uh, we're not sure, we might come here, or we might try the packing house and reflection point, so we'll uh, see where our where the motor takes us. Mm -hmm. Two bass for you, one bass for me. Three bass, well, had a good day. All right, I'm your host, Daniel Holderbein. My co-host is Ryan Richter. We'll see you next time on DNR Outdoors.